what's up YouTube back with another one uh, let's see what we gonna do so I've decided to you know y'all saw me or at least heard me talk about how much I want to make a week and it constantly changes and I keep going I keep adjusting making it safer uh, I went with ten dollars a while back a trade trying to make a hundred then I went to 20 trying to make a hundred because I wanted to be in the charts less more risk uh, higher reward but you know I would stay more disciplined but I, I started thinking not thinking but yesterday I got in the charts but I didn't make a video I was just um, watching TV while I was trading so that's why they make a video because you know it wouldn't be the same right but basically I was just messing around with two dollars yesterday and you know just messing around I, I made like a quick forty dollars yesterday and with with me starting at two dollars the amount of trades I can lose before I blow the account is a good size you know it, it's I can lose a lot of trades in a row and I just don't see it happening often at all you know so how should I put it I mean I'm not gonna blow my entire account you know I wouldn't allow that I would stop after like a certain amount of trades but let's say like eight trades I'll, I'll go up to eight trades if I lose eight I'll stop that's uh that doesn't happen very often to me losing eight trades in a row so with that being said I'm thinking okay for video purposes $20 would be cool because I can hit my goal within a few trades 10 minute video uh, me rambling on like I'm doing now uh, another 10 15 20 minutes you know 10 minutes to 30 minutes per video that's good enough you know um, but I just really want to make just profit just profit and uh, limit losing right so I'm gonna stick with two dollars because I can lose a lot of trades if I if I do like I can go on a bad run and still end up in profit so with that being said the videos I will continue to make videos that are not too long but basically um, I'll be doing two dollar videos you'll probably only see me make like twenty dollars or not even twenty you'll, you'll see me make like 17 18 dollars and then i'm out then i will you know stop recording and continue to trade to hit about 50 trades man you know to get it up to like 70 80 dollars and um and and you know two times 50 is 100 but if you're trading at 92 percent and some wins some losses like you lose some percentage there so like i said 70 80 dollars a session and um yeah, I'll do that. But while I'm doing that, you know, I, I feel safe. I feel like I won't lose that many trades in a row. So that day is going to be profit almost for sure. Daily, almost. And and I can just have the TV on. I can have conversations with whomever might be around. Um, whatever the case, you know. So I think that's the route I'm going to go with it. Um... I will probably withdraw daily. I might just, I don't know what I'm going to do yet, but I'll probably withdraw daily, uh, withdraw the 70, 80 daily, or maybe just like 50 of it, leave 30 in, withdraw 50, leave 20 in, whatever the case, and let it slowly just, you know, have my initial investment in there and then slowly let it build like 20, $30 a day, and then just take out 50. And profit each day so I'll see how that goes and um, basically yeah I mean I might I might tell you how the account grows or whatever the case but that doesn't really matter because you know I really just want to spread what I'm doing but this is the safer route it's you almost have to even if you try to lose seven to eight trades in a row you couldn't do it you know what I mean? Like, it's hard to do that. 
So if you're trying not to lose them, like you kind of shouldn't. And if you do, if it happens once, it can happen once or twice here and there. But if you do it like twice within the same week, that's kind of crazy. Or you might be just trading, putting in too many trades. With five seconds, 50 trades is, it's easy to hit that real quick. It's just five seconds. Um, I also don't have to be as focused. It'll kind of just happen for me. You know, I could guess right more then I'm wrong, so, and it's not like guess, it's an educated guess, right, like, you're just being a little more loose with the strategy, but with that being said, I'm gonna hit, like, uh, try to hit 10 wins here, and then call it a day, so, uh, let's get started, this seems to be moving okay right now, we're just gonna try to get in, Jump the gun. I would have won that first one. Um, I jumped the gun on that one. I went ahead and so I placed my trade. Thought I was going to lose it. But figured I know it was coming down. Or I already thought it was coming down still. I just went in early. So I placed two more trades. And you know I ended up getting all three here. As you can see. And like I said uh, yesterday I was hitting some $2 trades here. I just didn't feel like... Uh, posting it and y'all can see I just you know here I probably lost like four hit four and then you know just did my thing here with the two dollars and then I will continue here uh profit for today is zero and y'all just saw me hit three so I'll probably be at like five dollars or something like that but that's three trades already in the books and um lucked out a little bit there right hit that one that's four and y'all see this is so natural to me now like just getting used to how these charts move when they move I mean they don't always do the same but the chart has somewhat of a rhythm depending on what it's doing it has a rhythm you just gotta recognize it when you do and go with the flow and then after like a minute or two, it'll switch up on you and start doing something else. And that's when you analyze again and, and switch up with it. Okay, so we'll have to double up here. Okay, we got both of those, right? Yeah. So these two make up for this one, right? So one win. So where are we at? One, two, three, four, five. So I need five more. And we'll be done. Or at least we'll be done with the video. And then I'll just keep trading. I'll put on some YouTube. You know, I know the YouTube like um, some ESPN videos like First Take and Undisputed. Uh, speak First stuff like that you know and I kind of don't feel like watching it this morning I'll have to filter through it because the Cowboys lost against the Eagle and I'm the Eagles and I'm not trying to hear it unfortunately growing up in Texas San Antonio Texas here uh, I am a Dallas Cowboy fan so you know it was it was great in the 90s and uh, you know it is what it is right now but you know season's not over we'll see what happens come down yes sir yes sir got both of those I'm sorry I'm talking and I'm losing count of um, where I'm at so six four more Uh, my next video will probably be another, uh, it won't, I won't name it Method to the Madness. Uh, if you've seen the videos, I have like, I don't even know how many, two, uh, not two for sure, three. I'm not sure if I have four. I think like three videos, maybe four, called Method to the Madness. Because, 
you know, trading five seconds is madness, but uh, there's a method to it. There we go. Seven. So three more. Um, there is a method to the madness. Um, so that's why I called it that, you know, but um, not probably going back up. Okay, never mind. Cool. So two more trades. Um, I won't call it Method to the Madness Part 4 or Part 5 because, you know, it's kind of played out. But I liked the name. And um, it made sense to me because, like I said, 5 Seconds is Madness, but there's a method to it. Uh, people try to say it's gambling, but it's not. It can be. But I feel like I found a way to make it a strategy, to make it make sense, to actually uh, win with it. Most people that try it out do well with it, but they don't manage their money correctly. They'll have some good sessions, and then they'll go crazy when they're losing and just blow their whole account. It's not the strategy. Most strategies probably work if, because you're making educated guesses here. You're making educated decisions. It's like uh, I used to bet on sports. You know, you 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 bet on ten games. Out of those ten games, you'll hit like seven of them. You know, like you can you know who's better and who's not. And then you look at the point spread and you kind of. You know, that, that's when it gets tricky. But overall, you know, you know, um, it just is what it is. Some teams are just better. And yeah, some, sometimes there's an upset, but it's called an upset for a reason. But so when I traded, not traded, when I uh, bet with sports, I kept it the same amount and just kept it moving. A lot of people blow their money on parlays. You'll bet six, seven teams trying to make a lot of money only betting a little and sometimes that shit hits and it's cool but a lot of times it doesn't because that one team will mess you up and that's that a, that's just the odds so you're better off betting each game individually same amount and you're good to go some people bet like ten dollars on three games and then like fifty on another they win the three games they put ten dollars on win the uh, lose the fifty dollar game like just trade the same amount on all of them and I feel the same way when you're trading with uh, binary because you'll win more than you lose if you have somewhat of an idea of what you're doing. But people will trade, make five dollar trades. They'll make fifty dollars, and they want to hit a hundred, and they start doing like ten dollar trades or twenty dollar trades. Well, now you're negating all those trades you won by losing three or four of them because you increase the increase the amount. So basically, you just have to. You have to stick to the same amount of trades each time and just grow the account. And then if you decide to increase your amount, that's cool. You know, basically, um, I've played poker as well. So, you know, I, I started off playing poker online and then a lot of sites got banned and it got a little more difficult. I got into sports betting. And then sports betting, COVID hit and kind of ruined that for me. And um, I started looking into trading and, you know, trading stocks. I knew nothing about binary options. So I hit four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, so one more. But yeah, I started looking into stocks like, okay. Well, actually, before I did the stocks, that's when uh, there was a bull, a bull market for um, crypto. Like, when it was going, you couldn't lose. There was no way you're losing. Like, everything was going up, right? So, I got into that, made a little money, held on longer than I should have. Okay, so, I said eight, You know, I got I held on longer than I should have, but it was still a good experience. Um, 
after that died down, I um, said, okay, let me look into stocks. So I look in the stocks and looking at all of it had, you know, Fidelity or whatever and, and Robinhood, all those little sites where you can uh, buy stocks at. And, um, come on, y'all. And, um, y'all see I'm getting quiet because the amount is starting to increase, so it's time to stop playing around and actually, actually try to, uh, do something here. They almost got us. But yeah, so that's um, 10 trades, 10 wins. So let me get one more in. Because, you know, just losing all those trades in a row with the percentages probably didn't even make. You know, probably lost a little more than $2. Who knows? Yeah, there it is. Come on, stay down. All right, anyway, but... um. Started looking into stocks, you know, there's so many different ways to trade stocks, right? You can just find, try to find your good stock, hold it, and think long term. You can be a day trader, options, you know, it's it's so many different things you can do. And um, the problem I had, I would, I would see videos of people trading Forex. And I didn't know what Forex was at all. But the video titles didn't say they were doing Forex. It was more like I would see pictures of it. And they would have, you know, Trading View up or whatever software they use. Or like something like Pocket Auction or whatever, right? And I would see those charts and I'm thinking, okay, I'm over here investing in stocks. But I don't have these charts. I'm... I'm doing something wrong like what are we doing you know like what am I doing why don't I have these charts open for the stock I'm in like I don't know what's going on they're doing something I'm not and I don't know what the hell I'm doing that's what I thought well wrong they were doing something totally different right so I stumbled across a video I think I was trying to study charts like how to look up charts how to use charts for stocks and I stumbled across a Forex video or was it even I don't even think it was Forex I think it was uh, a video for pocket options like one of those I think it was like lady trader or some shit uh, excuse my French I cuss a lot I cuss a lot anyway um, lady trader or something and I was like oh damn like this can't be real you know like doesn't get no better than this like this is easy you know but don't get me wrong I mean I tried her strategies none of that worked for me not not just a little now I was probably taking more entries than I should have but you know they have all those such and such traders such and such trader they all have you know they all you know women with an accent from a certain region and so it's kind of just um advertisement almost not saying their stuff doesn't work I don't know if it does or not I've seen a lot of comments where people actually let her trade their account and she blew it I mean that happens but I mean not that happens but you know you took that chance and you know nobody is immune to blowing an account and you know yeah anyway but that's what introduced me into binary options and pocket option. So I got on there and, um, you know, I, first I, what did I do first? I looked into it a little bit, you know, Googled it and, um, you know, good reviews, bad reviews, just like everything else. Everything has good reviews and bad reviews. Well, not everything has good reviews, but everything has bad reviews and sometimes you know, people are just disgruntled or whatever the case, or they just had a bad experience. But I said, okay, let me download. I didn't even download it. I just went online, uh, played around in, de in the demo a little bit because you can you can use a demo without registering or anything. And um, I remember I was on OTC Apple like I am now, 
And man, on a demo account, my first day, you know, I got used to the um, settings and everything. Uh, at the time, they didn't have uh, five seconds. The lowest I could get was 15. And um, I got on 15 seconds, and damn, I killed it. You know, I killed it. I went from a thousand to like a hundred and thirty thousand in the demo first day and I was thinking to myself there's no way and the the chart I'm in it was just a, a trend it was going in one direction crazy so it would come down and then just a long ass candle excuse my French again and it come down a little bit and then just push and push and I was just trading it up the whole time I remember it going up and I was just trading it up and like man this is too easy making this crazy money so you telling me with a thousand dollars I would have made a hundred and something thousand right now within like this hour and I couldn't believe it right so I, I got off then I really started doing my research okay is this shit for real you know it, you know can I really make money like this you know using this platform and I was on reddit YouTube all kinds of stuff, you know, looking up binary options itself, looking up pocket options, etc., etc. And yeah, that's some stuff that's not regulated or is regulated, whatever you want to say. Um, there's always my fear of the government taking it away. Like, I mean, the U.S. kind of is, you know, you just have to, you know, how should I put it? Like, I used to fund the account through Cash App and uh, using Bitcoin. And my Cash App got um, got closed, saying it's fraudulent activity. The only activity I had on Cash App was, you know, depositing money through Bitcoin and receiving Bitcoin and transferring that over to cash out of a uh, pocket option. And what I think happened is Cash App recognized pocket option as a gambling site versus a trading site. So they were thinking that I was using a gambling site like sports betting site offshore, which wasn't which is not allowed. They didn't give me a reason. They told me to just look at the terms. Kind of some stuff Pocket Option does. If you have a complaint or they like don't let you do something or whatever, they just tell you point you towards the terms versus just saying, This is what you did, you know? But it is what it is, you know there's nothing you can do about it, honestly. Um, but yeah, so I, to this day, like I, I still don't have a cash app account because they pretty much just done with me. They won't let me open another one. Uh, it's canceled. It's done. But you know, I'm, I'm all right without cash app. You got Zelle, you know, whatever. Um, which also opened my eyes. I no longer use uh, Coinbase. Just because of, I mean, I don't even know if Coinbase would do the same thing or if they would let me to continue to uh, send money and receive money. But my thing is, um, you know, with, with the U.S. trying to regulate crypto so much and all of this, the U.S. wants their piece of the pie. And I'm not trying to give it. So, you know, I found like a decentralized... Um, broker not broker uh and not a wallet either but you know stuff like coinbase i basically use qcoin and right now they're all right and qcoin didn't even have know your customer at the time they do now which i don't like but it's still it you know if you if i open up qcoin it'll tell me they don't there's certain functions i don't have because of the region i'm in so qcoin kind of isn't uh, regulated by the US like um, they don't they kind of don't do business at least for now or at least from what I know now there are some people that do all kinds of research they don't trust nothing and um, you know but for now from my understanding pocket option or Q Q coin won't report like your taxes or anything probably unless they specifically ask them to and why would they like you're really doing some stuff but anyway um yeah it seemed like you could legit make money off pocket option so i got onto pocket uh, i opened up pocket option you know created an account got in a demo and um again the very next day 
made a lot of money in the demo. I was like, damn, this is crazy. But then I tried that same strategy. It wasn't even a strategy. It wasn't even a strategy. It was me just going with the trend, just hitting all these candles. Well, I didn't catch charts that were trending the next day. It lost all that money back in the demo, of course. Lost all that money back in the demo. And, you know, I already told people, oh, my God, we're going to make so much money. This is too easy. Why is not everybody doing this? Um, the next day I suck and I'm like, why do I suck all of a sudden? Like, why do I suck at this now? The day after that, I'm great. Later on that day, I'm horrible. So I, I wasn't understanding. I was like, okay, let me stop just clicking buttons and actually pull up, um, a strategy and, and, and stick with it and see what, what's up. So I did that. And, you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Everybody's trying to catch reversals. I tried everything. Lady Trader, Jeremy Cash, you know, everything. But, you know, just like the free stuff uh, on YouTube. I didn't sign up for any programs or anything. Like, I watched so many different videos, so many different strategies. I was doing 15-minute trades, 5-minute trades, 10-minute trades, 2 minutes, 1 minute, 30 seconds, a minute and 30 you know, 15 seconds, 20 seconds, then they busted out to five seconds, five seconds. And um, I think I've tried so many strategies, so many indicators to where, you know, my knowledge grew, my knowledge grew, but it still, I still wasn't making consistent uh to me, it wasn't consistent enough. Like, I wasn't, I didn't have a right understanding of it. You know, like, no, I understood, but I'm just too impatient. You know, like I said, my time frames got shorter because I, who wants to place a five minute trade, watch it reverse last minute, and you lose? You waited five minutes to lose. It's horrible. You know? So, that's why I like the shorter time frames. Get it over with. You know, did I win or did I lose? Like, you, you find out right away. But I felt like the longer the time frame, the more I would just watch my money go away last sec, last couple of seconds. And, um, you know, it went both ways. Sometimes I was wrong right off bat, and then it reversed, and, and, I, and I got money. That was cool. But I saved money, but I stayed in the demo. I didn't start trading live until, like, four to six months in just practicing because I really hate to lose money um which everybody does but like I refuse you know if I'm losing money like it doesn't make sense to me and I'm stopping so you know I really dug into it really watched all the videos and did some reading tried to understand what's going on and I think I traded so much that I just got used to how the chart is moving you know at times, like the the habits, I wouldn't say habits these candles have, but, you know, I started recognizing patterns like you do with, you know, analysis and everything. But, you know, just like this candle here, like it might end up, you know, in the green or in the red, but I realize what it's doing in between. Then it'll give you like a last push. You know, most candles, they'll give you a last push and in the beginning, they'll give you a push. Like right now it's pushing, it'll retract some later. And then, you know, with the wicks right now, it'll probably finish higher than this, you know, but um, it's gonna push back down probably and then come back up towards the end type stuff. But um, you just recognize stuff like that. So when you're trading, you keep falling for certain signals or certain movements, you have to realize, okay, this is not what it does. You have to do the opposite at times. Or just leave it alone because you keep getting tricked. So I was wrong about this candle here. No, it might come back down, actually. No, I was wrong. It's reversing. But anyway, everybody kept trying to catch reversals. Like, okay, this this chart has been trending this way. You know, okay, it actually did end up right here. But anyway, um, everybody's trying to catch reversals. Reverse, reverse, reverse. But why though? This chart's been going 
in this direction for the last 20 minutes. Why are you waiting for it to reverse? Why not just ride that wave that whole 20 minutes? You know what I mean? That's what I was thinking. Like, you're making life difficult. You know, you're waiting for that one time when the chart reverses, when you could have just went with the grain. You know, you're, you're waiting for the, for, the, for the pattern to change. Why not just go with the pattern until it changes? And then go in the other direction with it. You know, That's, that was my thinking. But I didn't really think that way until the five second strat. So I was, you know, stochastics, uh, ADX. I mean, a lot of indicators are good, really, you know. Uh, I never really cared about moving average much only because I like the shorter time frames. Moving averages, you know, that's really good for you. I, actually, you can set them up to where they help you in the shorter time frames too. I've seen it. Uh, a lot of good traders out there with way more understanding of what's happening than me. A lot more technical, you know, but I don't need it. You know, the, this, this simple setup works for me. And it's all about, for me, it's all about on the right side, the one minute candles, just seeing what's happening and the overall trend. And then for sure I would not be my number one is the the line chart with the stochastics the way the stochastic moves with the line chart is my bread and butter period if I had to choose just one chart um you know this is why I don't trade like Quotex or something because they don't have two charts yeah you can open two windows I don't see the chart size like this is M20 M4 I didn't see that in Quotex. Um, maybe there is a way to see that. I didn't see it. So it kind of threw me off. I was so used to this setup. And then I'm, I was thinking, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I get my payouts from Pocket. Um, and that's all that matters. You know, they, they pay me out when I withdraw. Not right away usually, but, you know, it depends. Sometimes it's same day. Sometimes it's within an hour. Sometimes it takes three to four days. But... I use I get my money. I've got my money so far. So why leave if it's working for me? Um, but yeah, I could see the chart sizes. You know, M twenty, M four. These are the time frames. The 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 chart sizes that work for me uh, as far as how the indicators move. Uh, I got my setup, and I hope they keep it at five seconds. I hope this does not go away. If it goes away, you know, it, it changes everything for me, right? Um, because this is what I use. I would have to adjust and it would be rough. If they get rid of five seconds, you know, I, I wouldn't say it would ruin everything, but I would have to, it's, it's almost like starting over then. I'd have to find something else that works. I don't see myself finding anything that works as well for me. As these five second trades. The only thing that could make this better for me is two second trades or one second trades. You know, I feel like the lower the time frame, the better for me. Honestly, like, you know, I won't take a chance of getting, you know, spiked out and stuff. Like, I would just, you know, let me, let me see. Does it go lower? No, right? You never know what that does. I'm tripping. But, um, yeah, they better not lower these time frames. I'd, I'd really kill it then. But anyway, um, yeah, the line chart with the stochastic. This is my bread and butter here. Straight up. And I stumbled I stumbled across it on accident. Um, I had my line chart. Not my line chart. I had my stochastic set up. I opened another screen. I'm trying to remember what I opened another screen for. It might have been for the line chart. I, was, I think I opened another screen. I was going to do a line chart with like a moving average or something. But then I still, okay, so I, I made one a line chart and I was going to open another one. Well, I made it a line chart, but the stochastics were already down there. And I saw how they moved. So, wait, what is this? Like, why are they moving so fast? 
It's not supposed to do that. That's all I was thinking because I'm so used to just these trends here. But when I saw how it moved, I said, oh, damn, this I might be on to something. What's going on here? You know, and it would still, you know, and at the time I, I found it when it was moving kind of like this over here, where it's just nice and smooth up and down. I was like, oh, damn, no way. You know, so I opened up another chart with uh, just the candles, started playing around with it in demo and boom, I never looked back. You know, I stuck to this. You see other traders, new strategy, new strategy, new strategy. There's nothing wrong with improving. But why keep changing? Like if something was working for you, why do you change your strategy? Why are you using totally different indicators, different time frames? Why do you have a strategy for one minute, strategy for two minutes, strategy for, you know, whatever? The only reason I made a video with a strategy for 5 seconds and 30 seconds with the Heikinashi candles is because, you know, 5 seconds isn't for everyone. I was trying to reach more of a bigger group. And the 30 second one, that's what worked for me at the time. But the entries are so limited. You always got to wait for a doji candle. You always got to wait for, like, when the market's about to reverse. And, you know, that, that takes a lot of patience. You're going to end up taking entries you don't want to take because you're going to be impatient because you want to make the money now with my strategy you're just trading price action you just need each candle each candle is different for you you know you trade each candle differently and um that's it made a video called sniper entry that's you know if you're patient and you just need that one entry you know that's it so like right here would probably be where you're getting ready for your sniper entry. It looks like it's going to reverse here. So you're going to hit this next candle. This might be a doji candle here. So you're going to uh, hit that next candle. And the next candle you're going to just catch it coming down. Let's see what it does. Uh, not gonna be a doji candle, but still might be uh, reversing here. Mm, maybe not. No, so this wasn't that situation, okay? But it wasn't a doji candle so it finished in the video you'll see it finished you know going up you wouldn't mess with it but it almost was one of those situations but basically you catch it when it reverses and the next candle is going to be strong you know you, you can hit that candle like two three times easy but the sniper entry you just want to wait for the right moment and then you just hit that candle you know and um you'll be good to go so check out the sniper entry video if you want to make just uh, higher amount trades and not as many if you're a patient person unlike me um, yeah you just wait for that right setup and boom you, you can you can hit that easy real quick you don't have to do a minute or 30 seconds to where the chart has time to just uh, reverse on you and spike you out you hit it right when when it's in that price action you know um like this candle here like you can't lose there right but um yeah i think i've been talking enough um i'm not going to edit this video i'm just going to leave all this there just a little background on how i started but my only problem now i wouldn't even say problem it's not even money management anymore because i was so greedy at first you know i'd make um a certain amount of money but then I want to keep going but then I start taking losses then you want to win it back then you blow the account you know um so that's why I kind of scale back now too I'm like all right I want to make five thousand a week I still want to make that but using Martingale I don't have to account size to do that I would probably blow accounts 
making those high amount of trades or I'd have to spend hours in the charts and I don't have time to spend hours in the charts with my schedule and um, I, I need to just get in and get out so I will try to dedicate like 30 minutes a day which will allow me to get a lot of trades in uh, how many let's see how many trades I, I know I did a bunch just now or oh, it's not a bunch 25 trades but that was within like a few minutes right let's see and I did some talking in between them in between then as well we started at 413 finished at 423 so 10 minutes I was in that 10 minutes did 25 trades so if I if I trade for about 20 30 minutes I'll get that 50 trades in plus but I'll win 50 I, I did t 10 minutes 10 trades so may, it might take me an hour to get all those trades those wins I don't know I doubt it if I'm really focusing and getting my trades in I'll, I'll hit my um 50 trades in like 30 minutes give or take plus I'm watching TV you know I'll be doing something else just chilling while I'm chilling you know I'll be trading and yeah I'll watch TV for more than an hour for sure so I'll sit there and trade while I'm watching TV and you know pretty much just uh, hit my target and then get out um, so that'll be what's going to work for me going forward you know watching some sports or whatever the case may be when I have the charts open just do my two dollar trades and that'll work for me and then uh, eventually two dollars becomes three dollars or four dollars or five dollars you know as our account grows so I'll continue to do, to do these videos where I'm just in here trading hit y'all with y'all like five or ten trades or five or ten wins talk you know talk about current events or whatever the case is things that might have changed for me whatever but just to keep it going just to keep uh, people seeing the videos so they can get into this and um, yeah, my next video will probably be an instructional video, but it'll be the same thing. I'm gonna, it's gonna be the same setup, same rules. Um, I might just gear it towards Martingale. It will be in a demo because you know I don't want to lose real money trying to teach. And um, some people will comment, "Oh, you're in a demo." Yeah, I'm in a demo. Like I'm. I'm teaching this is an instructional video go watch the other videos if you want to see a live account people are so negative people are so negative you know they just don't want it to be true then why are you watching you know I go into the chat and pocket option and they're just so negative you know like do your research and just believe you know in the process it's it's ridiculous anyway that's pretty much all I have. Um, yeah, I mean, I yeah, I plan on um, being way more consistent with my trading. Not necessarily, not necessarily shooting the videos because sometimes you know the kids are home. You know, like I say, TV's on, and that's just too much uh, background noise for me to be trying to shoot a video. I also have thought about um, you know being on camera. The only reason I haven't done that is because, you know, got to make sure, like I say, again, peop, you know, I just, you know, just distractions, you know, I got to make sure nothing's in the background, you know, it's just a hassle, like, what's the point? Plus, I don't know if I want the attention, you know, um, you know, my channel's small, so it's all good, but, you know, you never know, you never know what could happen, I don't want to be out somewhere someone's like hey don't I know you damn you know like unlike most people like I really don't want the attention but um you know I, I'm thinking about it we'll see I'll probably the next you know I'll, I'll probably uh, start putting my face on camera maybe not every time but sometimes just so you know make it more personal y'all can see me you know what I mean for the people that have been riding with me for a minute or you know reach out to me and show appreciation because this works for them or even if it ends up not working for them they still realize that 
I'm real. Like, um, I'm not scamming nobody. I'm not selling no programs. None of that. You know, I did mention copy trading a while back. Someone did reach out to me about copy trading. They seemed pretty cool about it. Understood that I would probably um, expect y'all to uh, be affiliated. And right now, like I say, I want to be consistent here and consistently make profit for like a week or two before I allow copy trading because I just want to make sure that I'm legit making profit every day. So once I start allowing copy trading, if I'm losing, once I start allowing copying, I'll have to assess, okay, am I trading differently? Was it just a bad week? Or is something going on with pocket option to where, you know, stuff starts being funny? So I don't know. So I do need to show consistency here for like a few weeks trading and then um, to get a good, you know, data point set for myself. And then once I allow copy trading, I'll be able to tell the difference. Like if I'm failing, because the last thing I want to do is lose my money, but I really would hate to lose someone else's money on top of that. So with that being said, like, and, and I'll be doing $2, but you'll have to have like 500 in your account just in case, you know, if you want to take a risk. Now y'all saw I went up to like what, 16 or 30, $16, $32, I think $16. So, you know, that's not much, you know, so you wouldn't have lost. But there there will be times where I'll get into the hundreds here probably, you know, hopefully not. Hopefully I don't lose that many trades. But if I do, I don't want to blow your account. I want you to have the same uh, cushion I have so that your account doesn't get blown. So basically, um, yeah, I just need you to be willing to lose a certain amount and just ride with it. But um, if you set a limit, like to where you, if you lose 100, you're out, you might end up missing out on that trade that I won. And, you know, you just lost your 100, but I continue to make profit. You know what I mean? So, but we'll get into that once I allow copy trading. I'll, I'll, I'll mention everything, set up what you should do, what you should think about, and we'll go from there. But we'll keep it at $2. And, um... I think you'll even be all right. If you have like uh, 60 to 100 in your account, I think you'll be all right. I think you'll be all right because I shouldn't lose too many trades, you know, in a row. But just to be safe, it would be cool to have how much I have in there. And and I'll and, and I'll start back up with like five or 600 or something like that. And then um, we'll go from there. We'll go from there but not everybody's going to be able to do that so i don't know we'll figure it out you'll you'll be all right with 50 to 100 in there i i'll, I'll try real hard i'll try real hard not to uh, uh go crazy i won't be as loose as i, I was just now with my two dollars while i'm allowing copying um once i once i when once i have allowed copying once my account grows again, I'll, I'll know that your account grew. So that's when I can be like, all right, they should have enough money in there. They should have as much as me. So let's just build it. Maybe I'll start at 50 or 100 and just build that up. And then I just know that whoever copied me, their account grew with me. And then I, I'll know what they'll be able to afford for the time being, you know? Um... But yeah, so I do want to um, get more of a data point. Now, I will say this account is new to me, but it's also in the negative. So I don't want to take it off of private and show a negative overall balance because people will look at that. Now, I've had... I've had several different accounts for several different reasons. Um, so it just so happened that this one's negative because, you know, I got a little greedy, had some bad runs and just, you know, just made bad decisions. So I just want to get this into the positive before I even take it off private as well. Um, before I even stop hiding, uh, you know, the history 
because how should I put it? Yeah, there's 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 people that don't see how I'm doing. They just look at the history and say, "Oh, he's in a negative uh, on this account. He doesn't know what he's talking about." So that's not true. So I don't want uh, the things I've tried on this new account with money. I was able to, you know, with, with nothing but profit from other accounts, right? And, and mind you, I don't have duplicate accounts. I'll just close one, open another one. I'll take my money out, close it, open it. But um, that was still profit. You know what I mean? Like profit that I lost. But it won't look that way on this account, if that makes sense. So just for the people that can't see past that, I'll wait until this account's in the positive, And then I'll probably uh, allow copy trading. And um, we'll go from there. Uh, I've talked long enough. I appreciate y'all for watching. And uh, I'm probably going to get up. Try to hit this gym. Or get ready to hit the gym. Opens at 5. Uh, yeah. Uh, appreciate y'all for watching. I'll holla at y'all. And um, next video will probably be an instructional video, most likely, if I have the time. Uh, basically, just me talking more, you know? Um, talking about the setup and then pretty much just uh, what I'm looking for or not looking for. But it won't be a lot of instructions. I, I've done that. I've done that. I'm just going to be talking about Barton Gale, how it can work for you as long as you somewhat know what you're doing. And as long as you're managing your money, uh, it's very easy to blow your account using the Martin Gale strategy. So very, very easy. It, it could be one of the worst things you try for sure. But if you use it right, I think it's a life changer for sure. So with that being said, I'm out and um, I'll holler at y'all next time. Deuces.